In this video we're going to look at the consumer price index, inflation and deflation. Do these uh, three examples and then these three examples. Okay. So let's begin. The consumer price index is a measure of the average price paid for a market basket of consumer goods and services. And um, when the consumer price increases, that's what we call in uh, that's a measure of inflation so inflation is measured as the percentage increase of the consumer price index and deflation is the percentage decrease of the consumer price index so if you take your book out and go to page 250 we'll see we'll see uh, how what what the figures play out the last number of years and um, basically uh, one there's a couple of things I want to note uh, if we go back to page, let's say, to page 249, um, notice that it's not just food in your market basket that the consumer price index measures. It's housing, you know, house prices, uh, clothes, uh, cost of transportation, cost of medical care, cost of recreation, cost of college tuition, uh, communication, telephone, postage, um, haircuts, you know, all sorts of stuff. So, 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 you know, a lot of different things, okay? So they call it a market basket and you immediately think that, oh, that's just things that you buy at a grocery store that you fit inside your basket. Well, not exactly. You don't fit a house inside your basket. So there's other things in there as well. Uh, so living expenses, basically. And, um, the, and another thing I want to point out is that the consumer price index does not mean uh, th this is not dollars okay so in 1978 67.7 .7 does not represent dollars um, it's it's a it's a kind of a funny number I'll try to explain it what it represents is in 1983 the consumer price index at a, at a point there was a point in 1983 where the consumer price index was 100 and all the and the prices are compared to that so that by the time we came to 2006 the consumer price index became around 200 so that means that um, if you know basically if a television if if if, mm, if, a, if, a, if a sample of goods cost a hundred dollars in 1983 that sample would then cost two hundred dollars in two thousand and six, so it would have doubled. So basically, inflation—it it, kind of shows you that inf inflation dub has doubled from eighty three to two thousand and six. So uh, a consumer price index is just a number to compare the average price of goods from one year to the next, or one month to the next, or one decade to the next. Okay. So in any case. Um, inflation is the percentage increase of the consumer price index. Deflation is the percentage decrease of the consumer price index. So in example one we're going to calculate the rate of inflation if the consumer price in index increases from 100 to 108. So um, inflation, I'll write this down, equals percentage increase of CPI and the increase of course was you take your 108 and you subtract 100 right and um, that gives you 8 and you put that over the initial value which was 100 okay so uh, as usual percentage change or percentage increase is the change or the, the increase or the decrease o over the initial uh, amount or value, right? So percentage increase is always the change over the initial value. Or in other words, the change, of course, is 8 over 100, which as a decimal is 0 0.08, and as a percentage, 8%, right? So if the consumer price index increases from 100 to 108 that's an inflation of 8% that means average prices have increased by 8% so 
see if you can do the example of two. Calculate the rate of inflation of this if the CPI increases from 215.9 to 219.2. Press pause and do that one yourself, please. Press pause and do it yourself, and then play the video and check, just to see if you've got the idea. Okay, so I'm going to do it now. So once again, inflation is the percentage increase of the CPI. So that's going to be the change or the increase, or the change or the increase over the initial value amount, right? So the increase is going to be so. It, uh, well, let's let's put it this way: it, it changed from 215.9. So the initial value is 215.9. So you need to have that on the bottom, and the increase. Well, we subtract 219.2 minus 215.9, which gives what? Put that in your calculator. So that gives 3.3 .3 over 215.9, and then I could just take 3.3, divide that by 215.9, and I have uh, 0 0.01528, etc. And if I round that, I'm just going to round that to a decimal uh, with one to a percentage with one decimal place. So move the decimal point one, two spaces over, and now I have one point, and it's going to be a percentage to one decimal place, so just 1.5 percent. Okay. Now we're going to look at page 50, December 2009 to December 2010. Okay. So if we take out page 250, look at the table. And notice that this the, this is the consumer price index in December. I mean, of course, there's a consumer price index for every day, for every month, for every, you know. But these are just for December of these years. So for December 2009, the consumer price index was 215.9. Okay, so that's your, your average price is given by this number. Of, of average price of goods is given by this number and 2010 the average price of the goods is given by 219.2 and we calculated that to be indeed an increase of 1.5 percent which you can see on the table 1.5 percent right okay so that's correct now do example three press pause and do this one yourself calculate the rate of defle deflation if the CPI decreases from 26.9 to 26.7 press pause do that one yourself and then check from the table to see if it matches with December 1953 to December 1954 okay I really hope you press pause and try that yourself and then just play the video and uh, see if you get the same answer so deflation is a percentage decrease of the CPI. Uh, I'll just write that down for fun. Percentage, and you can do decrease of CPI, which would be equal to the decrease, of course, or the change, whatever that is, the decrease over the initial amount. And how much did it decrease by? Well, we started with. And, and first of all, let's, let's put the initial amount down here. The initial amount, see it changed from 26.9 to 26.7, so 26.9 goes down here. The decrease amount was, um, uh, if, if you subtract, you get 0 0.2. But let, let's do this for fun. If you take 26.7 and subtract the initial 26.9, you actually get a negative Okay, you actually get negative 0 0.2, which, if it's a decrease, it should be measured in uh, as a negative number, 26.9. Okay, so that gives what on your calculator? 0 0.2 divided by 26.9, 0 0.00743. Now, of course, this is a negative number, and we're going to write this as a decimal to one 
de as a percentage to one decimal place. So I'll skip the decimal point over one, two spaces to turn it into a percentage, and that gives negative 0 0.7. And then this, this part we leave off because we're rounding down, and so it's negative 0 0.7 percent. Okay. And if we check the uh, CPI table, go to December 1953. Oops. 953, we have um, consumer price index is 26.9, then 1954 consumer price index 26.7, and it has indeed decreased by 0.7%. Okay? So that was one of those rare years where we experienced deflation. And um, Quick note, I guess, on what causes inflation. Why are prices continually increasing? Well, to be honest, the general reason, I mean, of course, it, it, inflation, deflation happens now and again, but the general reason is, in fact, because there is more money in circulation. The more money is printed off and put out into circulation, in general, is why... Uh, <laughs> prices keep going up, so uh, you know, and that's a general trend. Of course, I mean, there's localized factors. Um, if if uh, during a recession, if you take 2008, the 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 uh, inflation rate was only 0.1 percent. I mean, that kind of reflects the fact that there's not that much money being spent. Uh, the the country's in a recession, and therefore prices kind of stagnate or they lower, right? Um, obviously, another thing that might affect inflation is uh, shortages. If there is a shortage of oil, then in then the price of oil will increase. If there is a shortage of, um, you know, doctors, uh, prices of medical care will go up, and and or or whatever. So shortages affect it, but but the general trend, and I guess it's something that not many people really think about is is the fact that you know the fact that we keep printing off money uh that is really the the problem with uh I inflation every single year okay so anyway so if we go to example 4 if a tv cost $200 in december 1980 and the price changed in accordance with the inflation rate how much did the tv cost in december 1981 so, what we need to do is to find the inflation rate um, of December 1981. So, December 1981, the inflation rate was what? So, just go to your table and see if you can find that. December 1981, page 250, December 1981. So the inflation rate, December 1981, you might see is 8.9%. Okay. So um, the cost, if the cost, which, you know, if if the cost of the TV actually lines up exactly with the inflation rate of that year, then the cost will increase by 8.9%. So we're going to calculate now, we're going to get 8.9% of 200, right? And to do that, we need to turn the percentage into a decimal. So that'll be 0 0.089, right? or 0 0.089, of means multiply, so multiply by 200, right? Plug that in your calculator, what do you get? Seventeen point eight, right? So, an increase of 8.9% on the price of this TV means an increase of $17.80. So the December 1981 price, basically December 1981 price, 
is now of course 200 plus 17.8 which of course is $217.80 right? Does that make sense? So please press pause and do example 5. If a car cost $5,400 in December 1991 and the price changed in accordance with the inflation rate how much did the car cost in December 1992? So hope you press pause and try that. I'm going to help you out now, if, see if, in case just so you can check your answer. So if you go to December 1992, you'll find an inflation rate of 2.9%. 1992, December 1992, inflation rate 2.9%. So uh, December 92. The inflation rate 2.9%. So to get the increase in price, what we do is we get 2.9% of 5,400, and that gives us the increase in the price of the car, right? So we turn this into a decimal. Move the decimal point two places over, and that's point. 0 0.029 or 0 0.029 of means multiply, multiply by 5400. So we calculate 2.9% of 5400. Plug that in your calculator. We get 156.6. And the, um, the new December 1992 price, of course, is going to be 5400 plus the extra amount due to inflation so plus 156.6 okay so that's 5 5 5 6.6 6. that is the new price in December 1992 okay so example 6 if a house cost $12,000 in December 1948 and the price changed in accordance with the deflation rate how much did the house cost in December 1949 so please press pause, find the deflation rate from the table on page 250 and calculate that answer. Okay, I hope you've pressed pause and tried it. That's what you've got to do. You've got to press pause and try it and then I'm going to do it really quickly just to see if you've, if, if you've made a mistake or whatever so you can check your answer. Right. So if we go to 1949 on the table, the deflation rate is negative. 2.1%. If you haven't got that yet, please press pause at this point and and do the question. So 1949 deflation rate -2.1%. So what we got to calculate is -2.1% of 12,000 to get the price decrease, right? So we turn the decimal into, or the, the percentage into a decimal, move this decimal point one, two spaces to the right, and that's negative, negative point zero two one, or negative zero point zero two one of means multiply, multiply by 12,000 and put that in your calculator and see what you get. So we should get negative 252. So how much d would the house cost in December 1949 if it, the price followed the rate of deflation that year? So we would take our 12,000 and we would add or subtract this number. I mean, well, we'd add it. So in other words, we basically, we subtract $252. The price would decrease because it's deflation, right? So 12,000, subtract 252, and we get 11748, okay? So the house price would decrease to $11,748, right?